and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Uh, this is uh, Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2016. Uh, my name is Nellie Deutsch and um, I'm coming to you from Toronto, Canada. Uh, the weather is cold as usual. I hope it's uh, better than where you are. If you could just add in the chat box where you're coming from and just let me know if you're in Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2016 or if you're coming from another course or uh, how you got here basically so uh, I can better understand uh, who's here. So my goodness 34 degrees in Venezuela. Oh, that's lovely. Can I have some of that warm weather? Even though it's warm in the house, uh, because uh, it's uh, being air conditioned, but nonetheless, I hate the heating. I prefer the weather to be nice. All right, so I don't even know if my camera is on or not. Uh, so uh, let me just check and see if it's uh, on anywhere, not that we need the camera. I think it's fine without. So since I don't see it for some reason, um, anywhere, I'm going to disable it. All right, so the camera's gone and you only have my audio. Okay, so feel free to use the chat box, zero degrees in Romania, minus 19. <gasps> Oh my gosh, Anil, in Armenia, that is so cold. I hope it's not windy, ouch, because, <laughs> yes, Andrea, because uh, the wind usually makes it even worse. So I hope at least if it's 19, uh, minus 19, that it's, uh, it's dry and you're warm in the house and not watching this uh, outside the house. All right, so we're in week four. Now, it's really exciting because, um, as you know, in week four, you will become managers of a course and you have a lot of rights. So uh, it's important uh, that you're here because there's a lot of information and it'll give you a chance to ask questions as we go. A little bit about me. Uh, if you don't know me, I've been involved in um, technology in my um, EFL classes, English as a Foreign Language, as well as English as a Second Language, since um, the early 1990s uh, in the computer labs, which was called, still is called, uh, Computer Assisted Language Learning. And it did assist, and I think it does more than assist uh, these days. And you can read more about that. I got involved in Moodle. You're going to love it, Andrea. You're going to love being a manager. Uh, Moodle in uh, 2003, as the admin of it, Moodle, I don't remember what it was. It must have been 1 point something, 1 1.2 or 1.3. It was a long time ago. All right, so let's uh, start rolling here. What we're going to do in this uh, session is uh, we'll go over the moderators, of course, and uh, I want to thank them one uh, by one for volunteering. This is all volunteer, and it's completely free. So the moderators and myself, as well as you, we're all volunteers. We're all learning together and sharing our skills and expertise. We'll talk about the rich, rich editor on Moodle. Uh, we'll talk about hyperlinking in case you uh, missed that and the YouTube video. We'll talk about tools for the video tutorials that are available in the uh, teacher practice area and in the manager practice area. We'll talk about teachers as managers <laughs> in um, the manager practice area, which is actually a Moodle course, a separate course. We'll talk about the activities for you as managers, we'll talk about blocks. <laughs> now, blocks are the things that appear on the left and on the right of a Moodle course. If you have left and right, you don't necessarily have to have. You may have seen Moodle with only left uh, and the center, or just the right and the center. And we'll talk about badges of the week. Of course, you want to get your badge and support. 
Are there any questions about uh, Moodle, the um, anything uh, before we get started, the overview of what we'll be talking about? Hello, Claudia. Good to see you. Any questions? Feel free to add them as we go. Every question is brilliant and should be um, related to. All right, so this is uh, week four. You can see right here uh, in the course, you should uh, take a look at the uh, manager practice area of week four tab, as well as the badges that you'll be getting in week four and the tools to create video tutorials because the way the um, course or the Evo session operates is that you create video tutorials of what you learn as you learn. How many of you have created video tutorials? You must have if you got your badges for weeks one, two, and three. So just let me know in the chat, have you created a video tutorial? If so, what did you use? Because there are a few of them, uh, let's take a look at some of them in a minute. So these are the presenters. I believe Susan, I don't know if Susan's here. It might be too early for Hawaii, but we've got myself from Canada and it's 12.11 right now. We've got Susan Dixon from Hawaii. Uh, Nevis Teresi, who's probably sleeping right now, uh, who's coming to us from Australia, but she's originally, well, originally from Australia, living in Italy, back to Australia. We've got Brian Bonaham, who has uh, connectivity issues, so he's not always available. And Tom Hodgers from Venezuela, who's very active, along with Helena. I don't know if Helena's here from Poland. So thank you to the uh, moderators for helping out and we'll get to the tools in a minute. First of all, let's take a look at the rich editor. This is what it looks like. It first has one row and if you click over here, you'll get three rows and it's very rich because it has images, it has text, it has video, it has smileys and it has a microphone where you can speak directly from and your students, of course, can speak directly from the um, editor. It also has a webcam, where you can also speak through your webcam. It has a feature, a whiteboard, where you can draw and collaborate on your drawings. It's being developed. It's pretty simple. And it also has a camera, where you and your students can take your photos right there. Uh, in real time and added to the editor. So this is a rich editor. It's called Tiny MC. Hyperlinking is really important in any online course. Some courses have like Facebook, for example, it's not a course, but if you add to a chat in Facebook, the links will appear as active. If you add a link to this chat, the links will be active. But if you add a link to the editor in a Moodle course, it will not be active unless you make it active. And the way you do is by going over the link after you paste it, and then you need to go and hyperlink it. How many of you have seen the video? Let me know in the chat box on how to hyperlink in a Moodle course. I'll try to get the link for you from my YouTube video. Uh, here it is. Uh, all I needed to do was go into my YouTube channel on Google. It's so easy to get things from Google search engine these days, everything is absolutely there, ready for you to access. So there's the link to the video. You're welcome to watch it. I don't think it's that long, but you may find it very useful for the Moodle. I don't think it's relevant for other places unless they don't have the um, natural or 
automatic hyperlinking. So hyperlinking links. These are the tools that I mentioned at the beginning. We've got MoveNote. How many of you have used MoveNote? If you could just add that in the chat. Have you used MoveNote before? I know when teachers use MoveNote for the first time, and, and of course afterwards, they are so excited. Uh, it's also an app on your Android or your mobile device. So students love it. What you do is you upload a PowerPoint presentation and then you can add voice as well as video and then you can um, collaborate and provide feedback to your students and your students can comment on your MoveNote video tutorial. So anyone ever use um, YouTube, uh, sorry, MoveNote? I don't know, I don't see anyone responding. So could someone add something to the chat that I know that um, you have the chat? Just uh, give me thumbs up, thumbs down if you can hear me. Oh, I see, I see no. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, any comment is good because it, it helps me see if, um, if you're there. A couple have tried it, but with problems. Shouldn't be any problems, but if you do have problems, let me know. You will find a... Um, YouTube video on all the tools on Moodle for Teachers Evo under Tools. So let me um, share the tools with you in the um, in the course to make it easier. It's under Moodle for Teachers Evo. You need to create an account if you don't have one with either Google, Gmail, your Gmail account, with Facebook, or with LinkedIn. We took off um, Microsoft because it didn't seem to be working, but if you did use Microsoft in the past, let us know and we'll get it back. So this is the section where you'll find the uh, video tutorials, okay? So I'm at, you like Jing. Very good, Walid. I like Jing, but only for, uh, to capture images, not for the video, <clears throat> because you need to pay money eventually for the video. It's not free and you can't, it's, it's difficult to, um... SoundCloud is amazing, Claudia. Totally agree with you for just the audio. But we want to be able to also share the screen and what you learn. And that's where uh, MoveNote comes in. Screencast-O-Matic, in my opinion, is the best uh, for teachers and for students. Present Me is also free. All these are free tools. Plotagon is also a nice way of capturing video animations. It's a bit tricky. Needs a lot more thinking than the other ones. Um, Screencast-O-Matic requires no thinking at all, which I think is good because it saves time and teachers need to save time. Capture the image, of course, with Jing. You can also capture your images with Screencast-O-Matic. And of course, slide speech if your students are shy or if you lose your voice as a teacher, which happens. By the way, how many of you have lost your voice um, in the past? I mean, I have. Not in the past. I haven't lost my voice since my kids were babies. Uh, it's been quite a while, but I used to. I used to lose my voice uh, when I was younger, as a young, as a beginning teacher. I would lose it quite often. So losing your voice could be a problem, or if you're sick um, and can't make it to school, you might want to create a slide speech where you create a PowerPoint, add notes, and the machine will speak. So as I said, if you want to look at the tools, they're available in section 17. So try it out and let us know how it's going in case you have problems. The manager practice area. This is what we've been waiting for uh, since the beginning of uh, Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2016 because this is where teachers can do so much in a Moodle course. And of course, it's in preparation for the final week, next week, uh, the week after, sorry, week five, where you will have a course of your own, your own course, 
where you'll be able to work on a lesson and then share it with all of us. So um, in the manager practice area or MPA, you'll find a video that explains how to go about um, working in the manager practice area. You'll be managers of the course, which means you have a lot of rights and a lot of responsibilities. Um, because this is a collective course, you'll need to keep others in mind. Hello, Francesco. You'll be practicing using the activities that you weren't able to use in week three as teachers. You'll be able to practice adding blocks. Now, blocks are the things that appear on the right and left, as I mentioned. You'll be able to practice as the admin of the course, of the Moodle practice area, which means that you'll be able to add users and set the user enrollment method. You'll be able to change the course settings and you'll be able to add badges. Isn't that exciting? So lots of rights. Actually, you have the same rights that I have in the Moodle for Teachers Evo 2016 and that Tom has, which is the role of a manager. As managers of a Moodle practice area, you'll have, as I said, additional editing rights for the activities, and I'll show you which ones. You'll be able to add blocks, and you'll be able to be the admin of a course. Three areas. Okay, that's a lot to grasp in one week, but you can do it. All right, so let's say hello, Helena. Let's take a look at number one. These are the instructions. The first thing you do when you go into the manager practice area is turn editing on, which is number one. And many of you have done this in the teacher practice area. So it's exactly the same. It looks the same, but you'll see that you have more editing rights. Number two, the light or the editing button is turned on. Next, you're going to go to the right, this area, and you're going to open the menu called Add a Block. If you don't turn editing on, if it's not on, you will not see the block. Right now, you can try it out. Right now, none of you are managers. So if you go into the manager practice area, and let me take you there. I'll share the link with you. So you'll see that you don't see editing rights. You don't see anything really right now, but you will once you become a manager. After this session, all of you will be managers. Everyone who's in the Moodle for Teacher Evo for 2016 course will be a manager. So there's the link to the manager practice area. So if you click on it, you'll see that you can't do anything. You can't see the turn editing on until you become a manager. So let's take a look at the first area that you will be working on in week four. Week four, you're going to be working on additional editing rights for the activities. And these are the ones that you'll be able to work on as a manager. All the X's is what you will be able to do. So you'll be able to work on the assignment, attendance. You'll be able to work on the certificate, database, group choice, hot pot, lesson, newsletter, quiz, and that's not all. You'll also have rights to work on the scheduler, SCORM package, survey, WizIQ, you'll be able to create WizIQ live classes. Now, I suggest you do all of these and then delete. You must delete, okay? You must delete everything, your own work. Delete your own work once you create it. That means that if you create a WizIQ activity and you do it for now, okay, make sure you do it for now, not for later. You do it and then you capture 
the work, whether you're going to work on PowerPoint presentations, I suggest you use Screencast-O-Matic. So capture, capture your work, and delete your work. Okay, please do that. Um, yeah, take your screenshots. I suggest, as I said, use Screencast-O-Matic. I find that it's the best because it takes the least time. After you do that, you can get um, a PowerPoint presentation set up with the images using Jink, for example, or Screencast-O-Matic. The workshop is also for managers um, and external tool feedback. These are all for managers. So managers have a lot more rights. Now, let's go on to the next stage. The next stage is the blocks. Remember, there are three areas that you're going to be focusing on in week four. The first area, let's go back here, you're going to focus on are the activities that you couldn't do as a teacher. Then you're going to focus on the blocks. And afterwards, you're going to focus on the course settings. So let's continue with the blocks. There are a lot of blocks. If one of you feels like counting them, please do. How many blocks are there? You can't answer right now. Um, okay, and Tom is not going to give it away, I hope. Tom, let everybody else do it. How many blocks? I can add more, by the way. How many blocks, or they're called plugins. How many blocks are there in Moodle, in the Moodle, in the manager practice area? How many blocks? Okay. There are a lot. Okay, I've added only, and they go by alphabetical order. So you open up the add a block once you become a manager, which will be after this class. And then you'll see different blocks. Notice the clock block. The clock is amazing. There's a checklist block, calendar, and many, many more. Okay, let me tell you, there are over 10, over 20. So start counting. So I just took one called activities, okay? The first one, activities, so there it is. Okay, I took it out of here, I clicked on it, and then it appeared at the bottom right, or it could appear on the left. And then I wanna show you what you can do here. First thing you're going to do when you get a block is you're going to go into edit settings. This always means edit settings. Let me uh, get the, um, you'll get to know Moodle because it has the same uh, functionalities, the same, it's actually very similar in many ways. So let's get a green here. So you'll notice that this grid, or whatever you wanna call it, I call it setting. The setting icon is what you click on. And when you do that, you get the following. Let's uh, go on. Uh, these slides are available, of course, uh, on Google, also on SlideShare. So when you open up the settings, this is what you get. Configure activities block, hide, notice the I here, hide the block, assign roles, in the block or delete the block. Now you're going to delete it after you capture the screen. Okay, after you do your screen capture, your video tutorial, you will delete every activity block so that other people will be able to use it. And I suggest you create a few activity blocks and then delete them so that others can open them up because if they're there sitting, other people will have to delete your work in order to do theirs. So it's kind of complicated. Work quickly and remember there's responsibility in being a manager when you work with other people. You have to um, keep them in mind and keep in mind that they're also learning together.
with you. And it's a great way to learn to work together because um, in week five, you'll be working together as well. Now let me try to get, I'm trying to get the link, I don't know, for some reason, maybe my system is a bit slow. I'm trying to get the link to the PowerPoint presentation on Google. Let me do that now, even though it's in the... Um, in the announcement that I sent you, but there it is in the chat box. Cheryl, yes, we can see the chat. I mean, we can see you in the chat. Okay, so there's the link to the PowerPoint presentation where you can also click on the links. All right, so this is the setting. Let's continue. So you'll have this with you. Next is, once you click on it, Okay, you'll be able to go into, let me go back here, into configure activities. Do you see that? Configure activities. In the configure activities, okay, this is configure activities block that you got from here, you will see the following, where this block appears. Now you can decide where to put it. You can put it on the right, you can put it on the left, you can put it at the top, you can put it at the bottom. In other words, you've got all this capability, which takes time, right? You can also decide how you want it on the page. Yes, or to hide it, right, left, wait, but, and then save the changes. But if you're like me and you like to do things quickly, you don't have to do all that, but you should know about it. You can go to this icon. And do you know what that icon does in a Moodle course? Anybody know what the icon does? Anyone? That's right, Andrea. And I love it. I love this because I like motion. Uh, I like when things move. I like to be able to move everything. And um, that's how you can move things. Okay, it allows you to move things around. It's really a, a wonderful system. All right, so you can move things up and down, left and right, anywhere. Okay, any questions up to now before I start talking about the third aspect of week four where you are managers of the Mood Manager Practice Area course? Use it a lot, eh, Andrea? Right. It's the lazy app, but I think the technology is supposed to uh, help us and make things go quickly, right? I mean, why should we go slowly? We're in 2016, right? Things should be getting faster and faster, not slower and problematic. So let me know in the chat if there are any questions, any questions up to here. If you don't know what to ask, just anything, you know. So we create four blocks, take a screenshot, and then delete it. <laughs> yeah, I think, Andrea, I think four at a time, but there are a lot more than four blocks, Andrea. Uh, there, <laughs> I think there are over 20. You might want to count them. There are a lot of them. Yeah, but delete the ones that you create, yes. Any other questions? Uh, do we need to do an exploratory video tutorial? Yes, exactly, KT. That's the idea. I like the way you called it explanatory. I thought I saw exploratory. <laughs> Actually, it's both explanatory and exploratory because you learn as you explore, and by documenting it with a video, it's a good way to sustain learning and look at it at other times. It's also the way we would like you to encourage your students to also do the same. Only four blocks? No, Francesco, there are so many blocks. You do all of them, okay? Have a go at all of them. It's going to take you time, but I think that it's worthwhile to see the kind of things that uh, you can have in a Moodle course. Okay, but do them four at a time, maybe or five at a time, 
because there's so many of them. You can't do them all at once. But it's good to know. You might find some ones, Andrea, that you might want your administrator at your school or if you have a private Moodle, if you'd like to add them. I'll, we'll talk about installing... Oh, time is flying. We'll talk about installing uh, plugins maybe later on if we have time. How to install plugins. Uh, yes, you you have to... Well, the different kind of managers, Waleed, we discussed it last time. Uh, there's a manager of a Moodle site, okay, that's one manager, and there's a manager of a Moodle course, and a manager of a Moodle course uh, cannot create new courses, only a manager of a Moodle site can do that, okay, so it's another level, but that's an excellent question, excellent. Any other questions? But as a manager of a course, you have a lot more rights. What about our courses? Your courses you will have next week, okay, starting week five. First, you need to practice before you can have that, okay? It's important to... Those who do not practice will not have their own courses. We're only giving um, courses to those who go through the um, week four, okay, basically. So, yes, it is exciting. I totally agree. It's really exciting. And this is something that you won't get anywhere else. Um, well, not for free anyways, not even from uh, Moodle.org. They don't offer these things. Okay, so it's really a chance to do a lot. Okay, let's continue, and if there are questions, just add them in case you've forgotten. Now, this is the course admin. Okay, let's, let me go back and, and tell you a little bit about the course admin. You are also, as manager of a course, you have administrative rights of the course, not of the site of this particular course. You'll be able to add users and control the different enrollment methods. You'll be able to set the layout of the course and badges. Now, you're not going to make any changes in this course, only in week five. In this course, you're only going to document what you see in the course settings, in the administration of the course. So it's only read and get a tutorial. The course admin setting for managers of a course has the following. Notice this is the list. This is what you can do. And um, these are the things that you will be able to do. You'll be able to turn editing on and off from here, from the course administration. You'll be able to play around with the activity chooser off or on. And you'll see what that does. I'm not going to tell you. Let you explore. You're going to have be able to click on edit settings straight from the course administration. You don't have to go to the green once you're a manager. You'll be able to manipulate the users, and that means that you'll be able to enroll users. You'll be able to change, but you won't change it, but you'll be able to see the different kinds of enrollment for users, including PayPal. Uh, you'll be able to get the reports. You'll be able to change the gradings, but you're not going to change them. You're just going to look at them. And if you make changes, change it back. You're going to look at the badges. Open badges has stopped working. Um, they're going to, uh, I believe in a couple of months, they're not going to exist anymore. I don't know why. So it's not working on any of the Moodle sites. So that's still there. But they're gone. You're not going to be able to back up, but at least you'll be able to see how the backup looks. You're not going to be able to use the restore, but at least you'll see it. Import, publish, reset, question mark. All these things, um, you'll be able to see how they work, which is really important because when you have your own Moodle course, you're able to back up and move the course anywhere into another Moodle site or another Moodle course. So, lots of um, rights. Okay, now, leave all of this, okay, once you look at it, 
leave it as is. Please be responsible and do not make any changes to the course admin settings. This is only to look at. So you have the right, but don't use your rights, please. Okay? Um, because then I'm going to have to track who you were and delete you, and it's going to be very unpleasant. Don't, you know, let's be responsible and let's see how it goes. If it goes well, then my faith in humanity will be as is, because I do have a lot of faith. Okay, if not, I'll have to make changes. So leave it as is. Just look at it and document what's there. Now, let's go on. Nelly, are we ta we're talking about week four, Andrea. This is all week four. Everything I've said is in week four in the manager practice area. All this in week four. In week five, you will have all the rights in the world and you'll be able to do whatever you want. So in week four, you leave it, you only learn about it. In week five, you will have the right. So you have to wait till week five. Okay, so yes, we're talking about week four. Now, the week four badges. It's really easy to get a badge in week four. You don't have to do that much. You do have to go into the support forum, but only to read. Just turn it on. Take a look at what's there. If you have a question, ask. If you don't, don't ask. But maybe you can help someone else because we're teachers. We want to practice helping. Okay, so that's why I have left the support uh, as a criteria because I think that it's important for teachers because you're going to be supporting your students. And then this is the big part. Uh, Thomas has mentioned it, the block this is where you will add your video tutorials. And you might want to break them down into three. One for the activities, one for the course settings, and one for the blocks. Okay, but if you only focus on the blocks, that's fine. It's up to you, okay? Um, you can put three or just one for the blocks. But the criteria is to put the blocks. In other words, to have a video tutorial of the blocks. Let me just um, add this here. Okay, so this is the important part. This is where you need to get a grade. And you also need to respond to one other person. Yeah, one video on blocks. But if you wish to practice, you may want to do three. One for the course administration and one for the um, activities that you didn't do in week three. Okay, the next one, of course, is uh, tasks that need improvements. You might want to go into that again. It's important for us to learn from each other because we're teachers. And we want to know how our students are doing, and we want to help them. Uh, peer work is very important online, because you can do it. It's hard to do face-to-face -face, uh, in a physical face-to-face -face class. But online, it's important to get our students working together, helping each other. So that's why this is a place where you need to read it, at least. Okay, So tasks that need improvements. Okay, That's how you get your badge. So it's quite easy, technically, to get your badge. Yes, please, Andrea, please delete your work in the teacher practice area, as well as um, the, the activities there, once you have your video tutorial. Don't delete anybody else's, uh, just your own work. OK, uh, what happens at the end is I simply uh, move the course. I use the same um, course ID and I remove everybody. I remove all the participants and that's how I delete everything. But it's better if you do because otherwise it becomes very, very slow. Oh, you want to export it. 
that's a good idea. Uh, you can export everything to your ePortfolio on the Moodle. It's called uh, Exibus. I've also added, you'll notice, you'll see this, I've also added uh, Mahara. Uh, Thomas, I didn't tell you, I should have told you. I also added Mahara to the ePortfolio so that um, if you're interested in getting an account on Mahara, uh, this is my Mahara. It's completely free, of course. Integrating Technology org. That's the Mahara. Let me make sure that it's correct. Okay, that's the Mahara. Mahara is an ePortfolio uh, program where you can create, share, and engage uh, your students. So feel free to use Mahara. That's my Mahara, and you can join it. Okay, for those of you that are interested in ePortfolios, that's very good. Excellent. All right. If you need help at any time, uh, you know, we're there to help you, help each other, but we're also there. Thomas is there helping everyone, and I'm there doing my best to help. But if you get stuck, you can leave a message on the website uh, at the bottom left-hand side. You'll just pop it up and you'll get the uh, leave a message. Leave your message and we'll get back to you. You can also click on contact and I'll be able to get to you as well. Notice you can use your mobile devices. Um, the Moodle is compatible. Uh, with the mobile device. It's really nice. I like to use it and I do use it quite often. So I'd like to thank you. Thank you, Walid. But uh, I think that it's very mutual because um, we learn from each other. Teachers, of course, we learn from our students uh, a lot. And one of the things that we learn is how to help them. We learn to help one another as well. So the more you um, help each other, the more you will learn. Use the video tutorials as a way to sustain learning, and you'll be experts in no time. So Screencast-O-Matic and the other tools will help you engage your students. And remember that using technology, like driving a car or using any kind of tool, is empowering. It makes us feel um, not only energized, of course, that we can do it, but it really raises our self-esteem because we're able to, and I think this has been since man first started to use tools, uh, hunting tools and other tools, um, you know, eating tools and so on. It's very empowering. It feels good to be able to control things, um, and we can control uh, tools even though we can't control our lives, but at least we can control external things like uh, uh, tools. And Moodle is actually uh, a uh, tool that uh, gives us a lot of uh, control with our students. So thank you everyone. Uh, I um, use Camtasia to um, record this session, even though it's also being recorded in um, on WizIQ. The reason I use Camtasia is because I can't use Screencast-O-Matic on my Mac uh, yet through WizIQ. I'm hoping that Screencast-O-Matic uh, will be able to work with Macs as it works with um, I believe with Windows. So on the Windows system, you're able, you can actually record these live sessions, these webinars with Screencast-O-Matic if you're on a Windows system, operating system. Okay, so try it. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend and a great week. And looking forward to making you managers. So uh, I'm going there.
and I'll start working on that right now. Bye for now, and thank you. Thank you for being part of Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2016. Bye for now.